Do you know how demoralising it is? Getting notifications from FPR Update's Twitter account, seeing goal after goal scored in game week 31, and hardly any of them coming from your players. What's up guys and welcome to FPL Today in association with FPL Updates, your programme for hints, tips and news on the Fantasy Premier League. And the lovely guys at FPL Updates have a great Twitter account where you can get notifications of points scored and be as disappointed as I was in Game Week 31. But also check out their website where you can find plenty of articles by other people that know a thing or two about Fantasy Premier League. But here we are focused on looking towards Game Week 32 and reviewing Game Week 31. But before we get into that, make sure to answer the question of the day in the comments down below. As you've already probably guessed, my game week felt pretty awful. I didn't actually drop too far in the rankings, but it felt really bad during the games. But my question is, do you guys enjoy mid-game week game weeks? I don't because I'm working, I'm doing stuff and I don't have as much time to focus on FPL. But let me know in the comments down below how you feel. Anyway, for the game week, I got 51 points, which was 6 above the average of 45, but I did take a minus 4 hit to bring in Jamie Vardy and Alexis Sanchez. Fortunately, I captained Jamie Vardy, or my game week could have been a lot worse. The highest score of the game week was 118 points. My total points now sits at 1,746. Game week rank for game week 31 was 1,493,573rd. What a lovely number. And my overall rank has dropped down to 15,463rd. Now I was around the 11,000 mark after game week 30, so dropped about 4,000 in rank. My JNO Classic rank has also dropped from 20th to 26th. My FPL Updates Writers rank is still at number one. And I also dropped in the FPL Updates Classic League where you can win 400 pounds if you come first. I did actually rise up and now I've dropped back down to 459. My mistake of the game week, unfortunately because of Wrestlemania and going to Hampton Court with my wife and kid, unfortunately I didn't fix my team before the deadline and bring in Heaton for Foster. That would have got me an extra 5 points. Hence why I don't like mid game week game weeks. And before we go any further I'd just like to apologise for not getting an episode out for game week 31 but with Wrestlemania and doing stuff with my family and work unfortunately I couldn't get an episode up in time for the deadline for Tuesday and I didn't want to do anything rushed or too quick I'd like to keep FPL today as good as it is so that is why there was no episode for game week 31 and to be honest there shouldn't be an episode today really I did say to my wife I'd take the week off because I was ill but you know what painkillers were a wonderful thing that's not advertising painkiller abuse just for the record. Anyway, before I keep rambling any longer, my classic and head-to-head -head league saw mainly Reds or me holding position, but considering how bad the game week felt, I'm quite happy with how it actually ended. Ericsson and King came to my rescue in the dying minutes of the game week. Looking at the dream team of the week, we can see it would have scored you 126 points. Clean sheets coming from not very popular defenders and goalkeepers this week. But if you doubled up on Ali and Ericsson, you would have been laughing. Sanchez owners looked on in despair as Ertzel got all the points for Arsenal and Hazard proved his value yet again. And as far as the strikers go, Hernandez, Niang and Dini, that's not the usual lineup you see in a dream team of the week. So my star of the weekend, it's Christian Ericsson because I want to because he saved my game week. It's my show, I can put him there if I want to. Coming in at 8.8 .8 million, he scored one goal and got one assist. Although the assist is debatable, the stats website I use says it isn't an assist, but in FPL he got the points for it anyway. He got five attempts on goal with two shots on target, 19.6 minutes per chance, and a shot accuracy of 40% with a goal conversion of 20% and a goal involvement of 66.7%. Let me know in the comments down below who your star of the week was. We now move on to the hot list which is my list of three players in each position that I think you should be keeping an eye on because of their recent form in the last four game weeks and the fixtures that are coming up in the future. We start with the goalkeepers and we're going to start with David De Gea at number one spot with Victor Valdez and Tom Heaton coming in in third. David De Gea is there coming in at 5.4 million because he has double game weeks coming up and the Manchester United side are capable of clean sheets 
although the fixtures aren't the easiest with Burnley and Man City away in that double game week. In the last four game weeks, he's had three appearances. He's managed to get one clean sheet and conceded twice. Total saves, he's had to make six. And his next fixtures include the likes of Sunderland, Burnley, Swansea, and then some very hard fixtures against the likes of Arsenal, Tottenham, Chelsea, and Man City. That is why when we move to the defenders, you can see that Antonio Valencia isn't in the number one spot anymore. Instead, we have Ben Davies in the number one spot, just ahead of Antonio Valencia, who didn't play in game week 31, and then Ryan Bertrand coming in in third. Antonio Valencia is still there because of the double game week, but who knows if there'll be any rotation risk. Now, Ben Davies doesn't have the stats that usually a player in my hot list would have, but looking at the fixtures, I fancy him with Danny Rose out to get some clean sheets. And he's a Tottenham defender that comes in at 4.8 million and has a double game week fixture with Leicester still to be scheduled. In the last three appearances he had, he's had one clean sheet, conceded two goals. He's only had one attempt on goal and two chances created. So that's a goal involvement of 0% but I'm looking at him for a cheap Tottenham defender with a double game week that can get you clean sheet points. We then move on to midfield, and yes, I'm singing the praises of Christian Eriksen, all right? Deli Alley also makes the hot list though, just ahead of Alexis Sanchez. Christian Eriksen comes in at 8.8 .8 million, and in the underlying stats, he probably just beat out Deli Alley in game week 31. In three appearances out of the last four game weeks, he's managed to get two goals, one assist, has 15 attempts on goal with five of them being on target and also created eight chances in total. The up and coming fixtures for Tottenham are Watford, Bournemouth, Crystal Palace, Arsenal, West Ham and then Manchester United with that Leicester fixture to be put somewhere amongst those. And then we come to the forwards and despite the fact I'm not sure about his fixtures, Jamie Vardy is coming in at the number one spot. I feel like now with something to prove under Craig Shakespeare, this Leicester side is much improved and Jamie Vardy looks like he's probably going to continue scoring. Sergio Aguero is also a very, very good option and I might bring him in just because I'm scared if I don't, other people will be capturing him and I'll be missing out on points. But Romelu Lukaku and Zlatan Ibrahimovic just about take the spots this game week. But that by no means is any indication of my thoughts on Aguero. He could probably come into my team at any point. But Jamie Vardy coming in at 10.1 million has scored three goals and has had seven attempts on goal with four of those attempts being on target. His minute per chance is at 35.9, which isn't amazing, but his shot accuracy at 57.1% and his goal conversion at 42.9% is. Goal involvement coming at 57.1% also means he's getting involved in most of Leicester's goals. And with fixtures against Everton and Crystal Palace next, I could see goals in those, and he also has West Brom and Watford to come in the last few game weeks of the season. So that wraps up the hot list for this week. Is there anyone you think I've missed? Bar Aguero, I'm still watching him. But let me know if anyone else you think should have been on this hot list. Okay, so we now look at the fixtures for the next game week. And as you can see, there are some great fixtures here for some big points in game week 32. Starting things off with Tottenham versus Watford. If Tottenham keep up their current form, they should be scoring some points in this one. It's just where the points will come from. Last game, they came from literally everyone. Janssen, Son, Eriksen and Deli Alli all bringing in the points. Hopefully Eriksen can bring in some more for me. Maybe I'll even think about the Deli Alli and Eriksen combination. And then Watford, Troy Deeney and Niang, they did pretty well last game week. So maybe Watford are one of those differential teams that could make a massive impact on the end of your season. We then have Man City versus Hull. And have you noticed Aguero is scoring again? even against tough opposition with unfavourable fixtures, this could be the prelude to a massive Aguero score, which we know he is capable of. However, Hull have been surprising everyone with their current form and are now out of the relegation area, if memory serves me correctly. So could Hull bring an upset to this and completely turn over the FPL landscape? We then have Bournemouth versus Chelsea and Hazard is starting to return consistently and it's hurting those that don't own him. Trust me, I know. As for Bournemouth, despite difficult fixtures, some of their assets are still scoring. The likes of King and Afobi still getting us points. 
Will we finally get another Chelsea clean sheet? Because it's been a while. Then we have Sunderland versus Manchester United. And with the double game week coming in, a lot of people will probably be drafting in Manchester United players. Will Valencia return to the starting lineup? As far as I can tell, he was just rested because of a niggle. And will Ibrahimovic go into the double game week in good form? We then have Everton versus Leicester with the two informed strikers, Vardy and Lukaku. Lukaku's had a couple of quiet game weeks purely because the fixtures suddenly got a lot more difficult. But with this one and the next fixture being more favourable, will Lukaku return to his goal scoring ways and will Jamie Vardy keep up his consistency? And then we have Crystal Palace versus Arsenal on Monday to see off the game week. I need Sanchez to score points. I brought him back. He's the most expensive or one of the most expensive players in the game and I watched Ertzel get all the points last game week. Also, Palace have a double game week coming up, so people will be watching the likes of Benteke and Zaha. So we now look at the captain of the week, and we have the poll coming in with Sergio Aguero on top at the moment, with Deli Ali and Zlatan Ibrahimovic finishing the top three. I don't own any of them right now, which is worrying. Very, very worrying. And my captain choice, I feel like Sergio Aguero could have a big game haul versus Hull. Now, if I'm right, him with that bigger score could hurt my ranking. Coming at 12.7 million in the last four game weeks, he's had three appearances, scoring three goals with a goal involvement of 75%. Attempts 15, on target 6, with a shot accuracy of 40 and a goal conversion of 20%. I'm worried about not having Aguero, so I may have to bring him in. Differential of the week, and I'm looking at Divock Origi. He did a great job for me when he came in for the injured Coutinho around the Christmas break. At 6.2 million, in the last nine fixtures where he's played over 50 minutes, he has returned points in seven of those games. And then finally, the red herring of the week, and we are looking at the Manchester United options. It's a double game week. People are going to be bringing them in. Manchester United big team double game week is going to be appealing, but Burnley and Man City away aren't the best fixtures for a double game week. Burnley can be resilient. City away, it's going to be a big tie. Could be pretty short on goals. So I'd be wary about bringing in too many Manchester United options. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for tuning in to FPL today for game week 32. If you've enjoyed the video and you're new to the channel, please make sure to subscribe so you can watch FPL today for every game week for the rest of this season and moving on into the next one. Like the video if you're happy that I actually decided not to rest and do a video for all you guys. Also, check out my Patreon page if you want to support the channel. I've been JNO, you guys have been awesome, and remember, it's all about the game.